corner of this sick world, and the most modern, highest budgeted, and potentially the most controversial film we've ever reviewed. I am Dracula. Visually, Bram Stoker's Dracula is a stunning tribute to silent film. And it has some decent jump moments. in lucha! But let's meet Dracula. Well, nothing in his appearance to excite suspicion. <laughs> or his behaviour. But how does Mum Ra the Ever Living stack up with the original? We'll not let you go into the unknown alone. Within stood a tall old man, clean shaven save for a long white moustache, and clad in black from head to foot, without a single speck of colour about him anywhere. <laughs> Rather eccentric Count Dracula. Surprisingly, no mention of his bouffant hair, clown makeup, or wardrobe stolen from Liberace. <laughs> An adaptation has to make the original its own, but if you call your film Bram Stoker's Dracula, you better at least try to stick to the spirit of the book. The over-the-top makeup also creates a plausibility problem later when Keanu Reeves' laughably accented Harker I have offended you with my ignorance, Count. recognizes the rejuvenated Dracula. It is a man himself. Yeah. Look, he's growing young. Just like that. No doubt. No wondering what happened or if, oh, I don't know, it might just be someone else. I'm very sorry. Then there's the plot. Having called his film Bram Stoker's Dracula, Francis Ford Coppola then jettisons much of Bram Stoker's plot in favour of one from... Blackula. The Across the Centuries love story is nowhere to be found in the book, but it's the cornerstone of the 70s blaxploitation classic. No, oh, I cannot let this be. So while Harker struggles for his life, <laughs> Mina gets to know Dracula. Perhaps I'm a bad, inconstant woman. I don't think there's any perhaps about it. No. I mean, obviously you pity anyone engaged to Keanu Reeves' compelling impression of a lump of wood with a floppy wig on top. We can be married when I return. But still! And I know much of the original remains. I will be one of those who benefits from your generosity. But you cannot just add a whole new story and change your central character from soulless monster to romantic hero. Take me away from all this death. It's about as faithful to the book as Mina is to Jonathan. A lot of this film is love it or hate it. The drag queen costumes, the hopelessly un-Victorian sexuality. Like a wild stallion between my legs. Max, you're positively indecent. The characters who feel the need to voice their every waking thought. My sweet prince. Jonathan must never know of us. The performances straight out of the Nicolas Cage school of subtle acting. Prince. It's Grand Guignol at its height. <laughs> Maybe very amusing. How very droll. But it's about as scary as Dracula's Batman incarnation. Now, if you enjoy this gaudy, high camp, everything turned up to 11 interpretation, that's fine. I've got no argument with you. I've seen many strange things already. But what it absolutely, positively, inarguably is not, what it cannot possibly, under any circumstances whatsoever be described as, is Bram Stoker's Dracula. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe.